Did your son or daughter turn punk? Send them to the psychiatric ward. Film at 11. The thing about punk that appealed to me was it was really heavy guitar influence and I was always looking for that kind of sound and also the uh, just the no frills approach to it. It was really stripped down, it's, it was inviting and welcoming. You know at the time all the rock bands had theatrics and explosions and were painting their faces and it's like how can I, how can I do that, how can I achieve that, that you know rock god status when I'm just sitting in my room trying to figure out Ramones and Queen songs. My first punk show was like in July of 1978 and it was the Dickies and middle class at the Whiskey. Me and a friend of mine from high school went, uh, only, only one other soul was brave enough to go with me. I was a little frightened by what I saw. There was like a, a couple and they had safety pins. You know, the boy and the girl were chained together with safety pins. Oh my God, I'm going to get killed here. We're going to die. But everybody was really nice and welcoming and there was these three young kids up there playing really fast, aggressive, good music. I'm like, wow, they're like my age. If they can do this, I can do this. So that band really inspired me. And then the Dickies came on, and they were just you know, great, and they still are. So that, that really said, okay, I, I'm, I want to be in a punk rock band. In high school, I was a senior, and I saw this other kid, and he had like a punk rock flyer. And I go up to him, hey, you into punk rock? And he's like, yeah. I go, yeah, me too. So, ended up being uh, Jeff McDonald. We started talking about music we liked and punk rock and we decided to start a band. Everybody wanted to have their own identity. You didn't want to sound like everybody else. We were sick of the homogenized, you know, FM radio, you know, Steely Dan, Fleetwood Mac, Journey. Some of them are guilty pleasures now, I have to admit, but, you know, we were all against it back then. We just wanted to, uh, not have to all uh, go to, you know, the Guitar Institute, Institute or Musicians Institute and, and put on costumes. We wanted to be ourselves and be individuals. Since there was so few people into the type of music, it was so frowned upon and, and people were frightened of it. There'd be stuff on TV, did your ter son or daughter turn punk? You know, send them to the psychiatric ward, film at 11, you know, that kind of stuff. So you, you, you'd see other people walking down the street or you see a flyer or spray paint. We used a lot of spray paint back then to promote our bands. You know, there, I remember Black Flag had a huge 10 foot tall letter, I don't know how they did it, spray paint uh, of the uh, tunnel at LAX that went under the runway. And then Circle Jerks would go around Hollywood and spray paint banks and alleys. It was the only way to, to, to get any recognition is because it was so, you know, new, new, I guess, and dangerous to the, to the normal society. And, and, and it was dangerous for us because, you know, that we'd have a hard time, we'd put, be putting flyers up and. You know, citizens from the neighborhood would come around, you can't do that here, you know, run us off with baseball bats and stuff. Like, it was, <laughs> didn't get hurt, but it, it was, you know, it, it was pretty gnarly at times. Wow.